Hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching Z Miss It Easy. And welcome to the last lesson for design technology core content. And in our next video, I'll move on to Timbus content. But anyway, here's the last lesson for core content, which is 1.17, using communication techniques to present design ideas. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 1.17.1, .1, which is the communication techniques to uh, use to present ideas. So check out the pin comment for the timestamp. And we'll move on now to 1.17.1 .1, communication techniques used to present ideas. And I'll just skip uh, skim through the description. And here's three hand sketches, and it's the quickest way of getting your initial designs uh, on paper before an idea is forgotten. And it could be in 2D or 3D. And 3D drawings encourage the designers to consider what the product looks like from like a different angles. And different mediums like pencil or pen, like grid paper to create scale of products, arrows to show movement of within the design, and annotation can be added uh, at any point to show key parts, sizes, materials, components, and construction. An application could be the, the use of shading and color and different viewpoints can be an easy way of communicating an initial design idea. Right here. Then we have formal design or formal drawing. Formal drawings are a more precise or less messy style of drawing. They can be done by hand or with a CAD computer, oh, sorry, computer, computer aided design CAD packages. And formal hand drawings were used to such as ruler and set squares to ensure accuracy and neatness. Using CAD software allows the user to quickly make changes and the drawings can be digitally shared and copied with ease. And formal drawings are used when showing an, an idea to a customer, showing measurements or getting feedback from a user group. Then we have isometric, and it's used in technical drawing to show an item in 3D on a 2D page. And here's, a, here's how you draw an isometric um, drawing right here. Uh, beginning with an edge of a product here, create construction line going off at 30 degree with the edge, because isometric is in 30, uh, 30 degree. Then uh, fill in the next vertical line. And from these vertical lines, draw the next construction lines going off at 30 degree. And within these construction lines, draw your product. So check out like, other YouTube videos for a more detailed, uh, detailed description of how to draw isometric drawing. But uh, one disadvantage of isometric is that unlike perspective drawings, they don't get smaller as the line go into the distance. And oblique, it's created using oblique grid paper using 45 degree lines to create 3D graphical image. And oblique drawings are not very realistic as, as it is impossible to see the front of an object straight on and the side at the same time. Right here. And here's how you draw it. You draw a front view in 2D, like you see um, this right here, 2D. And draw construction lines at 45 degree, like, like a stand back. And measure half the true length of the construction line and draw back the product. And oblique drawings can be useful to sketch at speed or to show the front and the side of a building or any designs. Then we have perspective drawing, and they are commonly used in technical drawing to show an item in 3D on a 2D page, and they are, uh, they show an object in 3D getting smaller in the distance. So we have seen uh, in DC we will focus on two different ones single point perspective and two point perspective and single point perspective shows an object from the front in a realistic way as it gets smaller and smaller into a distance like it shows a point right here a single point and it's like going back towards that point and it's like a vanishing point and here's how to draw a single point perspective drawing you draw a front view in 3d draw construction lines projecting to the va uh, vanishing point and draw the next vertical lines between the construction lines and join the vertical lines with fake horizontal lines and draw a product with these lines. And two points per perspective is basically the opposite of a single point. Uh, there's two vanishing points right here, one here and one here. And it gives a more realistic view of a product. And here's how you draw it. You begin with an edge, of, uh, edge line of a product. You create construction lines to two vanishing points and you draw next vertical lines between construction lines. From these vertical lines, you draw uh, construction lines going to two vanishing points 
and draw in product between uh, draw like the product between the two construction lines. So uh, two point perspective drawing is quite complicated. So go search up tutorials online or like YouTube for a more detailed explanation. Then we have systems and schematic drawing. And for systems, designing certain products like electrical products may require a different technique known as systems approach. And this logical approach is particularly useful in electronics as there's a, when there's an input, process and output. Like block diagrams can be written usually in boxes with the headings, inputs, processes and outputs when planning how a circuit will function. And these headings are then used to plan what the input, process and outputs could be. Like right here, like block diagrams and different blocks to like show different process if it's an input, process or output. And schematic drawings uh, or diagrams use symbols to show the layout of electrical or mechanical systems. And it's also known as a circuit diagram. And they are, a circuit diagram is a schematic that shows how components are connected up. And schematics can also be used in repair manuals. And the symbols are simplified to look nothing like the physical components themselves. And then like, schematic drawings describe the points of, ele uh, of electrical connection only. And these are, these are shown as dots. And producing a schematic drawing on the computer is far neater than drawing by hand. And with computer programs available to quickly create accurate and neat schematics that can be easily shared with others. And here's how to sh uh, this shows how components are connected up in the form of uh, a circuit diagram or a schematic diagram. Then we have orthographic. And orthographic projections are working drawings in either a first or third angle projection to show it the each side of the length without perspective, like 2D drawing on a, of a 3D project. And they are used to show an, an object from every uh, like from every angle to help manufacturers to plan product. And these drawings are to scale and must show dimensions. And here's the first and third angle projections. First angle projections and third and third angle projections are the two types of orthographic drawings. They are also referred to working drawings. And the difference between the first and third angle projection is that the position of the plan, front, front and side views. And orthographic projections have a set of standard lines to show the different aspects of a diagram. And these lines allow complex shapes to be drawn simply in 2D. Then we have fitted and assembly drawing. If they are similar to exploded views, an assembly drawing will show how the parts of a product fit together and where components should go. And they are often used in uh, you to show how product how to, how to like, put product flat pack furniture or model kits. And there are two types: fitted assembly to show the parts put together and can be drawn in 2D or 3D, or exploded diagram, which shows a part being separated. Which brings us to exploded, exploded diagram, and it shows how the product can be assembled and how to separate parts fit together with dotted lines showing where the parts slide into place, like here, like dotted lines, dotted lines. And the diagram also shows that components that will usually be hidden in a solid drawing. And then lastly, we have others, in including interviews, which is an audio recordings of client interviews and user feedbacks. It can be a less invasive way of gathering information than video. Photographs, taking photographs to record every step of development and collecting evidence to help keep track of the stage of the research. And videos, like video evidence can be used to help remember client or user intergroup interviews. And they can, only, they, can, they can also be used to film user trials where slow motion replays or time lapses can be shown to identify a very specific moment. And the permission of the client or the user should always be given before recordings of any of the above methods when uh, you're trying to like interview others or take photographs or videos. If not, it could lead to like any like privacy issue or like potentially like they will sue you or anything if it go down the legal way. And that's it for this last video for design technology core content, which is 1.17. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and please leave a like and subscribe if you found it useful and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And in our next video, we'll move on to the team timber content. 
and also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.